Welcome to Christian Warrior Training. My name is Keith. We have a horrible incident coming out of Sebring, Florida, where a 15-year-old boy was shot and killed in the church bathroom. The suspect is in custody, and before we talk about the specifics of this case, I debated whether doing this video or not, but ultimately I'm doing it because with every video that I do where I talk about crime in a church, I always talk to you about how to prevent something like this from happening at your church. I don't want to bring bad light to this church. I'm not really going to mention them. And only one news outlet in Florida is actually writing about this story. And I think it's pretty important for church safety teams to talk about because we all share the gospel to vulnerable populations. And those vulnerable populations, they won't check their bad habits or their sins at the door of the church all the time. Now, we want them to, and we're going to continue the outreach and to minister to those people. But we do have to take extra precautions when we're dealing with vulnerable people. Now, if you want to learn more about keeping your church safe, head over to ChristianWarriorTraining.com. I've got free classes. I've got a newsletter that comes out twice a week. One newsletter deals with church crime, crimes like this that occur in churches over the past week and how you can prevent it from happening to you. And then I always do a training topic, usually on Wednesdays, that will help your safety team be better at what they do. Lastly, I got a gunshot wound treatment course coming up on June 2nd. It's going to be seven hours taught by a special operations pararescue man. I brought this PJ in. Uh, he is fresh from the battlefield. He has been in a war zone treating gunshot wounds for the past couple of months. He's got a lot of great experience and he's going to share it with us. So I will put a link to the class in the description below if you want to sign up. It is in Boise, Idaho. It is a wonderful venue for a class. All right, let's go ahead and break into the specifics of what happened in this case. Now, a 15 year old boy was shot and killed after an argument in a Sebring church, and this happened last Friday. Sebring police said they arrested a 17 year old boy who was not identified by investigators after witnesses identified him as the shooter. Officers first responded to the shooting at around 6 40 p.m. at a church located off Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Now, the 15 year old was flown to St. Joseph's Hospital in Tampa which is where he died from his injuries, and Sebring police said they detained the 17-year-old after arriving at the scene. Now, investigators believe that the shooting happened during a fight between both teens in the men's restroom inside the church. The cause of the fight is believed to be drug-related, according to the Sebring Police Department. Now, the 17-year-old shooting suspect is now facing homicide and possession of a firearm as a minor charges. So we have a shooting involving two teens over drugs in the bathroom. Now, this area of Sebring is kind of a rough neighborhood. There are people like these teens that need to be ministered to, and we want to share the gospel with them, and we want to bring them to our church, and we want to try to get them to stop their violent ways. That's what we do, and we should always continue that message. But if you are dealing with those vulnerable populations, it is super important for you to have some training, and I provide that training for free. I'm not charging. It's my gift to you for my fellow followers of Christ. First things first, you need security training for all your staff and volunteers. Now, you want them to recognize the signs of potential violence or drug-related activities. Where can you get that training? I provide some of that. I'm going to start doing more of this type of training over at ChristianWarriorTraining.com. It will always be free. There's no gimmick. I'm just doing it because it's the, it's a good thing. So you want to... Con you can also bring in law enforcement. They will come in and teach you about these issues. And you should always have that open dialogue with law enforcement. Now, you want to consider regular workshops or sessions with local law enforcement or security experts who can provide insights into preventative measures and emergency responses. You also want to create a safety team. Now, this happened at a small church. And a lot of small churches think they don't need a safety team. Yes, you do. Absolutely. You will have people in your church that will have skills, former military, former police, people that have taken a lot of classes and are just street smart. They don't necessarily have to be armed. They just have to know what to look for and have that responsibility not to be distracted by something else. Their only job is security. These people would be trained in conflict, de-escalation, emergency first aid, crisis management. We're not talking about like you're more likely to use. Uh, I, I heard this uh before it, you're more likely to use a band-aid than a gun in church. And that's so true here. You're just going to train them to deconflict. Like 
you could have seen these boys arguing and your church security team could go in there and mediate that before it rises to these things. And you can also train them in how to identify if they're carrying a gun. I have that training for free right now over at ChristianWarriorTraining.com. Head over there and you can learn how to identify people that have guns. You want to insta install surveillance systems. It, it helps identify suspects and incidents. It might it might actually record the actual crime that's occurring. Uh, it is, it's a good thing to have and do a 4K system. Don't go cheap on it. You want to implement a controlled access policy. So you want to manage access to the church during services and events, especially in areas that are less traffic like back entrances and restrooms. You want to consider having members of the security team or ushers monitor these points. You want to engage with the community. You want to work closely with local community leaders and law enforcement to keep abreast of local crime trends and issues. Now, this collaboration can also help in tailoring church outreach initiatives to better serve and protect the community. You want to do drug awareness programs. Most importantly, you want to do a drug impairment course, meaning you want to learn how to identify people that are under the influence of drugs. There are little telltale signs, pupil size, uh, how fast they're breathing, uh, track marks. There's all sorts of things that you can look for to help you identify if somebody has been using or is under the influence of a drug. Best thing you do is you can ask your police department if they have a drug recognition expert. It's called a DRE and see if there is one available at that agency that can come do a presentation for your church on how to identify that. You want to have an emergency response plan that includes procedures for lockdowns, evacuations, and communication with law enforcement during a crisis. You have a shooting here. You absolutely need to evacuate immediately. And you want to start thinking, is this person going to become an active shooter? You want to have an anonymous reporting system. You want to encourage congregation members to report any suspicious or potentially dangerous activities anonymously. This can help in preempting situations before they escalate. A lot of people want to say something, but there's this no snitch attitude in certain neighborhoods. But people still want to do the right thing. So if you have this anonymous reporting, it makes it easier for people to come forward and say, hey, there, there's some trouble ahead. The most important thing is to not stop ministering to these people. Still let them come to your church. Still bring them in. Share the gospel and talk to them. The worst thing you do is close your doors. Don't do that. Training and awareness and having people specifically assigned to security is how you prevent things like this from happening. That church is watching right now. You can reach out to me and we can work out some way to get training for your people and we'll take care of you. Just let me know. As we move on, uh, our security condition for churches is still at yellow, which means we are at risk of attacks. As we move forward, just remember, we wanna keep the doors open. Don't create the bunker mentality and remember your ABCs, always be caring.